All right, guys, so I'm back with another video. So today we're going to be talking about dynamic additive layering. I'm going to do this before we do that project from scratch uh, because I actually forgot to cover this in the dynamic additives uh, video that I did last. I could have combined that into one video, but oh well. Anyway, so we're going to do this one and then we're going to do that project from scratch. So uh, dynamic additive layering, it's a technique uh, that's used by ALS, as uh, some of you might know already. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to select the skeletal mesh component and I'm going to browse to that asset and open up this animation instance. And you'll see all this stuff going on here. Now I'm, going to, I'm not going to go over these notes, but you can download the project uh, to read into these notes to get a better idea as to uh, what I'm talking about in this video. Um, I actually have an easier time writing stuff down than I do explaining it in a video. So Anyway, so right here I created a locomotion layer and an upper body layer. I only have one animation playing on each of these, but there could easily be multiple animations playing on each of these, and it would still work the same way. So I'm going to break this down to you. It looks a little complex, but it's not as complex as you might think. Uh, so I'm actually using the, I just decided to use the idle hip fire for this one as the base. Uh, to make the animation, the dynamic additive animation from. So I'm using the, the entirety of the locomotion layer uh, and whatever animation is being played on the locomotion layer, whatever pose on whatever frame we're at, uh, that's being treated as an additive and it's creating deltas between that frame of the locomotion layer and this uh, single pose on the idle hip fire and it's creating that in mesh space so if you if you right click and you type in make dynamic additive and i'm misspelling for some reason but if you pull this up you'll see under the details we have this mesh space additive if you check that it'll be in mesh space by default it's in local space uh, so we have this mesh space additive ca cached right here, and we are applying it as a mesh space additive right here to the upper body layer. And then right here, we're caching it again, and we're playing it on everything but the arms. Now we do the same thing for local space, and I just did that so that you could switch between these to see the difference. So just ignore the rest of, uh, ignore these two things right here for now and just focus on this. So I'm playing the upper body animation directly on the arms rather than playing this by itself. I'll go ahead and explain to you why before we uh, explain the rest of this stuff a little further. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and explain this. Uh, so you'll see that we're applying this in local space because we don't have this checked and that is being applied as an additive onto the upper body layer right here in local space. Make sure that if you want it to be applied in local space that this isn't checked and if you want it to be applied in mesh space this is checked. Don't apply something or don't create a dynamic additive in local space and then apply it in mesh space. You don't want to do that. If it's in if it's in local space, if it was created in local space, it needs to be applied in local space. If it was created in mesh space, it needs to be applied in mesh space. So, uh, anyway, moving on, I'm going to go ahead and show you what this looks like. So you'll see if we don't separate that and play that. Uh, directly on the arms, the upper body layer, you'll notice stuff like this. Now the same thing will happen in ALS if uh, you did this in ALS, and I'll explain to you why. The reason why is because we are creating an additive uh, from the locomotion, between the locomotion and the idle hip fire. So the hand locations are being, uh, deltas are being created for the hands uh, based on this as well. So we want the hands to respect the upper body, and that's the reason why we're applying that animation directly on the arms. LS does the same thing if you look into it. 
Now I'm going to show you why it's doing that though. So you'll see this is uh, the locomotion pose. It has the hand back here, the left hand back here, and the base has the hand up here. So that distance between here and here, uh, there is a delta that is created on that. And so if we have, if we plug this upper body layer right here, you'll see this is where the hand is. And so if we get that distance from where it was on the, the idle hip fire and on the locomotion back here, and we apply that to this one, it puts the arm back here. So I just wanted to make that clear to you guys. That's the reason why we're doing this the way we are. You'll notice uh, that on here, I'm not applying this in uh, mesh space rotation blend. You can definitely do that. It depends on uh, the situation you're in, if you want to apply it like that or not. If you apply it like this, just know it's going to, uh, that means that the arms themselves and not the rest of the body, it's going to respect uh, the position they were in relation to the root down here. And it's going to ignore where the body itself is. And so if you're running and you have this set to mesh space rotation blend like this, then it's likely that uh, this will go inside of the arm or inside of the torso, or it'll clip through the head. Uh, so just make sure you're careful with that. In ALS, they were very careful how they made these uh, additive animations. And you'll notice that they actually have two of these set up for the arms. One has this unchecked and the other one has this checked. Uh, the one that has this checked is uh, the one that gets activated when you're walking and aiming. Uh, so also when you're idle aiming, they also have this one checked. So I just wanted to cover that. Right here, you'll see I have this blend pose per int here. And this just lets you change uh, the value so you can see the difference between local and mesh easily and between the base upper body pose. And that's pretty much it for this, guys. Uh, af after that, I'm just doing two bone IK. I've went over that in the other videos. So if you haven't seen those other videos, uh, those are prerequisites. I did all this stuff in an order in which I thought it was important in order for you guys to understand this stuff uh, as best as possible. So in the next video, I will be uh, covering, I will be doing this project from scratch. Not quite the same as this. We're going to be doing it differently. So we're going to be creating an aim pose and a fire animation, a melee pose and a melee attack animation. And then we are going to be using, uh, we're going to be creating a dynamic additive layering system that allows us to apply the locomotion over the top of both of those in such a way that you can have the stance for both of those. And I will see you guys in the next video.